Hello investors and welcome back to Just Running Stocks. During this video, I want to unpackage a lot that's happened this weekend. There's just been so many things that have happened from Elon Musk and his tweet that stirred up enough controversy about a 10% sell-off in his shares that it made the Wall Street Journal. So, I mean, the tweets are just absolutely powerful. We're going to be talking about the infrastructure bill, but not that long because I know you guys know that it passed. Last video I did for Proterra, I was just talking about I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to get it across the line. So they stayed up late. They got a win under their belt. I didn't know if they were going to be able to decouple it from the social bill. Okay, guess what? That counts. Uh, consider that we talked about the infrastructure bill. And then we're going to talk about the lockup period because I want to talk about whether or not Proterra is a buy. When it's a buy, is it a buy on Monday morning? Let's not do a long intro. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I've got pulled up, I've got the Elon Musk Twitter poll results favored Tesla stock sell, and he said he's going to do it. I mean, I haven't looked at the Twitter account tonight, but I'm pretty sure this is still a big deal for Monday. Supposedly, his brother sold on Friday, and I'm sure everybody knows about this. I, I put this on the community tab. And what else do we have? We've got on the Wall Street Journal, we've got this date about the debt ceiling coming up. So, you know, this was just kicked down the road. We've got the infrastructure that was passed. Congress is going to be out this week. They're coming back on November 15th. I think we've got some run up possibility in the Proterra stock. I think it could go well for it on Monday, seeing that this infrastructure bill did pass. I'm curious to see what happens with Tesla stock. There was enough warning and notice given to shareholders that I don't think they're going to be panic selling. I do think that a 10% sell by Elon will have an impact on the share price. I don't expect it to go down a whole lot. I would be surprised if this went under a thousand. So I would, I would really be surprised. So just remember that the debt ceiling is due on December 3rd, but we're not, it's, I don't expect the market to respond or react to this, that it'll be too late by then. So I would say this is a good week, uh, but next week I would I you know I would say we're getting closer to seeing a market reaction to the debt ceiling again. Just remember they like to back these things up about two weeks uh, for the market to respond to them. So I want to thank everyone who took the poll. Fifty three votes. Wow, that was an incredible turnout. I called out on the Proterra community, you guys. Never cease to impress me. I just really appreciate your participation. And I warned everyone that this is by no means official results. But I would say that if you're buying Proterra under $11, and I would watch this in the pre-market, this was not a buy. And I would say, you know, if, you, if you're looking to start a position and ride this up and get out, I think you could ride this through earnings, past earnings. I think that this is going to have a good earnings and I'll tell you why we're going to cover that but if you're if you're holding this under $9 I think you've got a great position in Proterra if you're holding this in the $9 range I think you've got a fantastic position in Proterra long term 2023 remember that's what we're talking about if you've got this in the $10 range you're amongst the 25% and then most people hold this over 11 so I would say if you've never started a position in Proterra and you're looking to start one under $11, I would say you're doing better than half the people out there that that really enjoy trading this stock or are holding it long term. So those are just the poll results. I would say, you know, low nines, you get this in the eight, it's a no brainer. I would not be hesitant to buy this stock if it ever dropped into the low nines or even the eights. I would I would be extremely bullish in those levels. There's nothing wrong with this company. EV's here to stay. You see where the stock is sitting right now. It is at the 10, it's under $11. Pre-market, you could see a boost on this. I would say don't buy this pre-market. You don't, I would, I would wait to see what happens in the morning. You know, uh, just, I wouldn't chase after it. I mean, under 11, maybe you're good, but I just, I was telling people to buy this in the low $9 range. You're all adults out there. I just want to see. I want. I want everybody to make money, and you know. I think that that's the mitigation. I think that if you can, maybe if you get this under eleven dollars, but I wouldn't chase this over eleven dollars. I, I just. I don't think it's a value buy, and I don't think you're absolutely mitigating your risk. Those are just my thoughts. Now, we're gonna go through just a couple of filings, and you can find these filings on the company's web. 
uh, under their SEC filings. Feel free to navigate there. I want to show you a couple of things because I want to talk about this lockup agreement. I haven't went into too much detail about it, but it's gonna it's getting closer, and we got to start talking about this because there's some language in here that talks about you know that the stock could take a dip, and this could be a buying opportunity. I I never have fear with adding or telling people to add to a Proterra position. So the initial pub public offering lockup agreement, you can see it here. It says that basically this is put in place so that people can have stability in a share price. They do these lockups. It's not mandatory. But when a company goes public, the underwriter typically enters into a lockup agreement to ensure that the share shares owned by these insiders do not enter the public market too soon after the offering. So people could just dump their shares after it runs up. And, you know, Proterra was notorious for going public right at that time in the market when February, everything was high. And then it's just been on a constant decline since to where some people have even questioned the company and if this is a good hold because they've seen other companies run up and it's totally understandable. And here we go up and down, up and down, and I totally get it. And I just want to let you know that we're not finished with these ups and downs. I think we're going to see some ups for the next few days, maybe this entire week, but we're going to hit some resistance levels. And we've got the debt ceiling coming up. We got this lockup period. So uh, the, the lockup period language, the last quarter, and this is the 10K. This is in the 10K last quarter. All you have to do is just do a, uh, a find uh, command F or whatever you do on your computer to be able to type in lockup. You can go straight to the paragraph in here that says a significant portion of our outstanding shares are restricted from immediate resale. The part that's good to understand is this could cause the price of the common stock to drop significantly even if our business is doing well. And this last sentence down here, as restrictions on resale end, the lockup ends, the registration statement is available for use, the market price of our common stock could decline if the holders of currently restricted shares sell them or are even perceived by the market as intending to sell them. And that's what could happen. They don't even have to sell these shares. About two weeks prior to December 15th, people could start selling in anticipation of the lockup period ending and people getting out of their position after this 180 days, which would put us on or about around, you know, I would say December 1st. The next thing you want to look at is the total number of shares, which is 212 million. And if you don't want to go through all the filings to find all this information, typically on Yahoo Finance, it's accurate on the statistics tab. So if you scroll up here, you can see there's a statistics tab. Type into your Google browser, Yahoo Finance, PTRA, and then click on the statistics tab. If you scroll down here to the share statistics, you've got two things that I want you to look at. If you've never looked at these before, you wanna look at your shares outstanding. 212, and I just showed you, that matches. I like to do my own research. I don't like to believe what anybody tells me, I've got to look myself. So it matches, 212, 212. Okay, Yahoo, I trust you, I'll use you, and I might not go and look, but before I tell you guys anything, uh, investors, I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna make sure I just check to make sure it's right myself. And then we've got the float number here. And I wanna go through what the float is. You see it's 159 million. That's a lot of supply. And what is the float and why is it important? Regular shares a company has issued to the public that are available for investors to trade. And the reason that we're talking about the float is the figure is derived from taking the company's outstanding shares and subtracting them from restricted stock. And restricted stock can include items that are locked up. So that's why we're talking about this because this could cause that oversupply and increase that number, which is already high and cause the share price to really decrease. Now, there's no guarantee that people will sell their shares, but typically when these lockup periods end, unless the share price is in an uptrend and the market is able to absorb the number of shares that are be, being sold, which Proterra is not in that position, 
It's not something that investors are running out to buy right now. I think it will be in the future because all EV plays are going to be hot. But this one is one that I don't think that they'll be able to absorb. And I think two weeks prior, like I was saying on or about December 1st, you're going to start seeing people that are in a position. If this runs up this week, get out of it this week. And uh, it could create an opportunity for you to enter a position uh, you know, within that time frame when, when this lockup period ends. So I would say about December 15th, you might want to enter this position for the long term. This is a long term growth stock hold. They're just entering serial production. We're going to find out a lot more in the earnings call. So let's just go ahead and get straight into why I believe the earnings call is going to be so great. So now, of course, you want to manage your expectations, right? But look at this on ticker terminal. Uh, so T-I-K-R terminal. I use this all the time. Look, Let's scroll down here and look at this unusual item, right? So this isn't something that typically happens every time. Look at this. In this last quarter, 189 million, right? This doesn't typically happen. There's so many things that happen this last quarter, and we're still positive gross margin, right? So this is good. The, the gross margin, I see them returning to this 5 or 4%. I see it increasing. We had $18 million that hit July that they told us about in the last uh, in the last call. If we take a look at the cash flow statement, we can even see this these one-time events that happened, there was like they were prepping, they were buying a lot of batteries. They told us this in the last quarter. They did some inventory purchases that were strategic. Uh, so our inventory numbers, you should see, you should also see those inventory. Oh, there it is. Inventory is it's it's not that much higher, but it's it's high, right? It's it's been trending up. So inventory also they had some loss of their battery uh their battery facility and standing that up a lot of scrap. I think we could see upwards of 70 million potentially possibly in revenue earnings, a better gross margin of maybe 4 or 5%. So those are just my thoughts. I wanted to summarize exactly what I've covered. Uh so is this a buy now? Yes, under $11, I think you're Still in a good position. Of course, I'd like to see you in the $8 range or in the low $9 range to mitigate all risk. Of course, if you're holding this long term to 2023, anything under $11 is going to be a great buy. I thought this was a great buy in the $14 range. Hopefully, I'm expecting this to be 23 still by the end of the year. Now, we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us. So I unpackaged those. We talked about the lockup agreement. We talked about the debt ceiling. So December 1st is going to be challenging. I think this is going to be a good week for Proterra. If you were to get in after the market opens or pre-market under $11, I would not buy this over 11 I just don't think it's a value play. You might be able to get in early. This could skyrocket. Any number of things could happen as soon as I release this video. You know, anything could change. So I hope this helps you. So I'm going to leave all my soliciting to the end of the video because I'm respecting all of your time. If you made it this far and you still want to consider giving the video a big thumbs up, it's really appreciated. Also, check out the description. There's some offers down there. Just get some free money and feel free to support the channel by joining the Patreon. That's all I got. I'll see you in the next video.